Greetings, fellow maker. I have a project I'm going to start on today that I wanted to do for a while, ever since we played the video game Grounded. Now, this video isn't sponsored or anything, but Bill and I love playing survival crafting games, and Grounded is one of those, but you're tiny. Like, honey, I shrunk the kids tiny. So you're these kids that run around this backyard. You have to chop down trees, but instead they're grass blades. You have to fight bugs. You have to build a cute little house out of your grass blades. It's adorable. And one of my favorite things about the game is how the different crafting station and items you make look like the materials that you find in the game. So the weapons are made out of pieces of grass and twigs and leaves, and it's just a really adorable aesthetic. One of the beginner tools I love in the game is the Peblet Axe. It's made out of a pebble and a like sprig of leaf thing. And it's just so cute. And I wanted to make it for a while and today's the day. Ha ha ha. I also got a treasure trove of references. Let me show you. Normally when I'm making a prop, I'll go in the video game and try and get the best side view I can get. But I'm spoiled with this one. The artist who made this wonderful prop put up the model on ArtStation with a beautiful side view, a back view, the other side view and like the front view like holy cow i could make the entire axe out of just this reference but i did create a little little vector one just for fun really um nice thing about this is i can break up the pieces into smaller parts so this is the axe head and this way i don't have to cut it out separately i have my own little axe head i can make this whole thing as one and then stick it into this little sprig that looks like it was split in half and you see how cute this aesthetic is? Like, I love this thing. It's just adorable. And I get to make my own. I'm gonna start off with the ax head. And for that, I have this really thick foam. This foam is about 25 millimeters or just under an inch. And it's a little fatter than what I need. But I imagine as I'm carving this down, I'm gonna take away some material. So let's start with this. thought about breaking out the bandsaw to cut out this piece, but the whole thing is supposed to look all chipped and beat up like a rock. So I don't want anything to be symmetrical. Now I can transfer some of the details over. There's a big slice there. And some little ones here. So all of this material here is going to be tapered down into the blade and then this will maintain the thickness right here. This 3D model is just such a beautiful reference. Uh, they did cheat in one little part I'm noticing. Uh, this is mirrored, um, so this side is the same as this side. Uh, so my sides aren't going to be exact of either, so they'll, each side will kind of have its own character. Um, I do need a line down the middle, just about, to reference um, where the kind of the blade's going to be. And now I can scoop out all the material from here down to this line, in like a little wedge pattern. There. None of this has to become dust. That can all just go away. And now I can redo some of the lines, kind of just show where I want the kind of the edges to be. And then we get to move to the rotary tool.
looking very nice. I can always refine this later, uh, but now I think I'm going to do the stem. I cut off these parts, so I need this to be super sturdy. I have an aluminum rod that I think I'm going to try and bend to the shape of the handle, and that way it won't flop around. This is like a nine millimeter foam about. I'm gonna have to get a couple of these layers, maybe a thinner one for the center, but I need to stack them up to get this thickness. The center piece of foam will have a channel cut into it that's the thickness of the wire. Now I just have to bend the wire to shape. Excellent, there we go. Uh, this upper stem part gets split around the head. I think I'm gonna have the top of the rod go straight through the head, and then there will be strips that go around either side of the head. So I don't actually need this part. It's just here for reference. This part up here will get cut away. And then the rod comes in here comes out there. So uh, I guess I drill a hole, cut a hole. My little tube isn't quite long enough, so I'm just going to use a normal drill bit. Awesome. Chop, 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 chop. Chop, 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 chop. Now I can make room for the core of the rod. This needs to be the thickness of the rod at least. This doesn't have to be pretty because it's all going to be covered up. There, that looks nice. So this is the middle of the sandwich, and now I'm going to add foam to either side. If these two sandwiched together was thick enough for the stem, I could cut a trench in one of the sides for this rod. Uh, but since it needs to be a little thinner, that's why I have the center one. And that's a better thickness. So I think I can attach these together, maybe? Yeah, let's get some sandwiches going on so I can round this over. And there is our foam sandwich. I did cut these a little proud. I have a lot of extra meat to round things over. Got the rod sticking out here. Uh, the ax head should still fit. And that'll get wrapped over the top like that. Oh, that is so cute. And it is. 
super sturdy. There's like no wiggle or play in that. Awesome. Now I get to transfer some of the details for reference and then get to removing some foam. There we go, that's super cute. A little rough still, but I am satisfied with that. Maybe I'll clean up later, maybe I won't. Uh, for the head, I think I'm gonna use hot glue. I'll get this in place first. Squish. Man, that's so cute. <laughs> that looks just like the game. Ah, awesome. Next up are the leaves. Got more 10 millimeter foam and I'm kind of just eyeballing the leaf shape. Uh, these are all gonna get bent a little bit. Like this one up here is gonna have to be heat formed a little bit to kind of keep its shape. Back to the rotary tool. With all that rotary tool work, I only used two bits. This is a sanding drum. I think it was 200 grit. It gets a little softer over time, so it's not as aggressive. Uh, so this is a nice gentle bit for the foam. And then this is even more gentle. It's a stone grinding bit, so much less abrasive. So this helps smooth it out. There, we got our cute little leaves. I love them. The uh, texture really evens out when you heat form these. Uh, so I wanna take the heat gun over this whole prop too to get rid of some of the fuzzies and even out all of the detail. The time has come to attach the leaves. Uh, I'm just gonna hot glue that down in there. It's gonna get a bunch of little rope wrapped around it. I'm sure they didn't use hot glue <laughs> and grounded. <laughs> For this leaf, I cut out just a little slot for registration, and then that'll get wrapped in rope again. Man, this is looking cute. <laughs> the last part of the foam fabrication are these wraps. Um, I have a whole bunch of scrap foam. Yeah, I'm looking for like long, thin pieces like this so I can cut down to strips. It's about, yeah, five millimeter foam, and that looks about the right thickness. So let's get going. That looks maybe a little thick. Let's try uh, taking this to the rotary tool and making some of these weavy, wiggly shapes. I guess I'll just kind of wrap these around and chop them up into pieces if I need to. Ooh, that looks pretty good though. Uh, I'm gonna use super glue for this. The hot glue is beginning to squeeze out in areas and now I need to cover all of the hot glue. So super glue is a great way to add an adhesive without being able to see it. 
put a little activator down in the area I'm going to be gluing stuff so it just sticks right away. And hide my crimes back there. <laughs> and speaking of adhesives, I love contact cement for sandwiching stuff. Like, you can hardly see the seam here from all the pieces I stuck together. It looks great. So I'll wrap around there. It's been a hot minute since I worked with foam, and I forgot how fast it is. Uh, I spent probably less than eight hours fully on this build and it's super lightweight and super durable. And tuck that in there. Foam, you can just kind of mash it in place. <laughs> oh, that looks cute. I did a second strip I can use for the bottom. This one, it kind of looks like it's just decorative, not so much structural, something like that. That looks super cute, and I only have a little bit of super glue crusties on me. Not bad. I think we're ready to seal this. I'm going to use Plasti Dip. I need some way to hang this. Hang on. Got a piece of wire we've used to hang stuff before. It's yellow, so I'm guessing this was either the Satisfactory Helmet or the Satisfactory Build Gun. Um, where can I put this? There. Let's turn that into a hook. You're probably wondering what Bill has been up to while I've been working on this project. I'm actually not sure. Let's go check on him. Sometimes I want to throw it all away. But here I am, throwing older all the time. Looking older all the time, feeling younger in my mind. Keep it up, Bill. <laughs> Got my Plasti Dip. This will just make everything nice and uniform and hopefully, oh, there's a lot of cat fur on this. Hopefully hide all the little imperfections. Looks pretty good. I'll probably do one or two more coats, but I'm going to let this dry. Look at my axe. It is so cool. I just need some paint now. And for that, I have a bunch of these acrylic paints, plaid effects, and they're good to go on foam. They're a little bit flexible. So if these little parts bend a little bit, the paint won't crack. To apply them, I could just brush it on, but I haven't used my critter gun in a while. We used to use this guy all the time for when we were having a rubber coat whole costumes. It's designed to go on a mason jar like that and you can put your color right in here and if you don't want to use very much color you can use a smaller container in there. And for the details of the paint job I had to dig into our Foamsmith 2 book because I couldn't quite remember how to use it. <laughs> Bill wrote all of the Foamsmith books and he did a great job explaining how to make weapons out of foam in Foamsmith 2 so I highly recommend it. We have both the physical and digital versions in our store. I'll put a link down below if you want to check it out. And with all of that knowledge, I think I'm ready to use my critter gun. I tested it out with some water and it works great. Uh, this is too thick, so I'm gonna have to combine this with some water to make it like a, I don't know, a whole milk consistency, if that makes any sense. Make a little batch in here. And I also don't need to prime the foam, but I have this primer, the Platifex primer. I'll try it and use it. That's about as heavy as I can go without it dripping since it's such a thin liquid. This is working really well though and it was really fast to apply it so I'm just gonna 
Let this dry, do another coat and let it dry and check back in later. For future layers, I'm just gonna mix in the normal white. This primer seems to be drying clear, uh, so that's good to know. <laughs> what I need is some lighter color pigment though, so doing white. Might as well make the next layer more of what this base color is, which is a kind of a greenish brown, very light. This turned out pretty well for a base color. Now it's time to do all the detail painting. There is the Peblet Axe from Grounded. I think it looks super cute. Paint job turned out great. All just plaid effects acrylics just kind of layered on in different gradients. I think this is a great beginner project. If you haven't worked with foam before and you want to start doing more organic shapes like leaves and rocks and things, I'll include the template I made down below and also the link to ArtStation where the artist has their 3D model for reference. I'll also put links to our Foamsmith books down below, as well as the tools and materials I used for this project. Not many, just foam and paint and wire bit, some glue. It's not too much in this project. Thank you so much to our Extra Credit Club. It's thanks to you that I'm able to take time to make projects like this. I think that's about it. We've got more fun projects in the works, so stay tuned to the Punish Props channel for those. And I look forward to making stuff with you in the future. Happy crafting.